All right, hey YouTube. We are gonna finish up Confucianism today. Just wanna say thank you to those who have subscribed. Thank you to the recent subscribers. Um, check out my uh, website, kenyattisintuition.com for readings, information on readings. Check out, uh, if you need to ask a question or something, you can contact me at kenyattisintuition at yahoo.com. And um, that's it, all right? So let's go ahead and get started, all right, with Confucianism, all right? Um, if you have not seen the first part, go ahead and watch it. I have the title, Confucianism, its founder in the five great relationships. Now we are gonna talk about Confucian virtues. Just as social harmony comes out of living, uh, living out of the five great relationships. That's where the social harmony comes from, okay? In Confucianism, according to uh, the thoughts of um, Confu uh, Confucian. Okay, Confucius, rather. I said Confucian. Confucius, okay? Personal excellence comes from the manifestation of the five virtues, all right? Social harmony, living the five relationships, <clears throat> and manifest personal excellence. Remember, the, the first part, you know, in order to experience the Tao here in Confucianism, it's through uh, human beings have to be trained. Okay. They have to be educated. Okay. They have to become excellent individuals. And how does that, where does that come from? The manifestation of five virtues. We're going to get into that. All right. They emphasize harmony between people. Okay. Um, but at the same time, they don't lead to, you know, like conformity, ant-like conformity. It says ant-like conformity. You know how ants are, okay? You know, just doing, you know, just kind of, uh-uh, 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 okay? Not just like robotic, okay? <laughs> no, okay? Some Confucian virtues, such as love and education and the arts, they help individuals to develop unique talents, all right? But the virtues most prized by Confucianism are largely social virtues, all right? So again, remember in Confucianism, all right, how do you become um, an excellent individual? Okay, just you need to develop all of, all of these things, okay? The arts need to, to be developed in you, education, so on and so forth, okay? Um, and a love for those things, and it will help you to become a unique individual, okay? Unique talents, okay? However, once again, all right. Uh, virtues are prized by a large, I mean, excuse me, the virtues most prized by Confucianism, social virtues. Individual uniqueness is ex expected to be muted, subtle, and considerate of others. Okay. That's not, in other words, uh, that it's not out in the forefront. Okay. All right. Let's look at these five virtues. I'll just name them and then we'll go over them. Rin. Li, Shu, Shao. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, all right? But I think that's how it's pronounced. Shao. It's X I A O and Wen. W E N. All right. So let's let's go over these. So what is Ren? The Chinese character for Ren illustrates the word's meaning by blending two similar pictographs. You know, Chinese characters, the pictures, okay? Um, for person and two. So the blend, it's a blending of a uh, person and two. Okay, remember, s relationships, the five great relationships were interwoven. Okay, so not just you. So the character, the language, okay, is a, a reflection, okay, or comes out of the virtues. Just like when we talked about the five great relationships, um, what was it, older uh, brother and yeah elder brother and younger brother okay there's two different words for it okay in um, in the Chinese language right mm hmm okay there's the there dis it's distinguished in the language all right uh, when we look at the Chinese ideogram for virtue of Ren we understand its meaning okay what is the meaning of Ren to think of the other relationships. This is all about relationships. Okay, this is foundation. Okay, and Confucianism, the five great relationships. All right, relationships. <laughs> all right, it is translated in many ways: sympathy, empathy, benevolence, humaneness, kindness, consideration, thoughtfulness, and human-heartedness. And I'm hearing right now, and the two became one. 
okay this is what I'm just hearing and as I'm reading this the two became one two separate beings okay becoming one one you know in a sense one flesh okay becoming one. and I know we typically think about that in terms of you know um, you know in the Old Testament when it talks about you know the, uh, Adam and Eve and he took her uh, unto him or something or he went in there or something like that and the two became one okay so we think about that typically um, in our Western thought in terms of marriage between a man and a woman but here okay it you know again inter the, the relationships are interwoven we are one with one another as we relate to one another to becoming one okay some people though which is you know um, bringing about social order okay when you are thinking of another person besides yourself so here it is to think of the other some people don't know how to be kind okay this is where we get in here in confucianism you know when confucius say okay some folk i mean human beings need to be trained <laughs> Human beings need to be trained, okay? <laughs> uh, and I mean, really think about that. Now, that may sound offensive, okay, to someone, you know, um, especially with our Western thought. Okay, I don't need to be, you know, I don't need to be. But we do, okay? We train our ch children, okay? They come into this world, you know, and they do some things, you know, that are maybe natural to them okay yet each society based off of what you know that society has chosen and decided is going to be best for that society in order for it to continue to survive and thrive okay they set out some rules and regulations okay all right through various means okay their educational system their health system their religious system so you know their whatever their system of philosophy is okay religion falling up under that so on and so forth so that and this is going you know based off uh, a lot of things okay based off their circumstances maybe you know where they're located you know the weather patterns so on and so forth okay um you know the foods that are available for them to eat etc etc okay so um you know, they have to be trained, okay, in the ways in which are appropriate for that society, for that society to continue, you know, to manifest itself, for it cont to continue on, because that is something that's important to the human experience, okay? We don't want to just come here and just die off, okay? It's important for us, all right? Um, excuse me, it's important for us as human beings to continue to perpetuate okay to continue to live on okay even for our names to go down in history and when I say that I don't necessarily mean for the whole entire world you know to know your name or your family's name no even if it's just you know your name you your, your family okay your the, your the people in your community all right um, I'm trying to think, you know, so we may do things, again, we honor our ancestors, all right? Now, we may not do it in general. I'm saying in general, it's not like a part necessarily of our Western culture. I'm not saying you don't do this in your own home individually, okay? It's not necessarily a part of our, our Western culture in anything that's written. Matter of fact, you know, with Western culture being a Judeo-Christian culture, you know, we look at it when other religions that do it and we look down on it. We think it's bad. We think it's evil. You know, we think you're worshiping the ancestors. No, but we do do it. Okay, we do an honor our ancestors. We honor our our family name. Okay, whether that be having pictures of your ancestors up in your home. Now, you may not have a specific altar for them that you have created for them, put food out for them, so on and so forth. But just having them on your mantelpiece. Okay, just having them on your wall, having them in your wallet, so on and so forth. It's still you're honoring. Okay, you're remembering who you are. You're remembering where you came from. All right. Um, you know, again, going to, you know, the grave sites of where your ancestors, you know, may uh, have been buried, you know, uh, even if it's just grandma or, or, or whatever. OK. And keeping it, you know, a certain kind of way, keeping it, um, you know, up, upkeep, keeping it nice. OK. Uh, yeah, I'll just stop right there. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of some other ways just off the top of my head. OK. Oh, 
a lot of times people um, honor their ancestors. You may have had, you know, uh, uh, your grandmother may have had a specific, you know, recipe for something, okay? Or maybe they were a good cook, okay? So maybe someone in the family, you know, knows uh, those specific recipes she had and you honor it, but you don't want other people, you know, to be privy to this recipe, okay? Because this is your family's recipe. This came from your family. It came from your bloodline, all right? It helps you it grounds you okay it grounds your, your family your family name okay so this is something that you know uh we do I, i'm not quite sure why i got off and all oh i was just saying you know how we uh every society every culture okay they you know train a child up in the way they should go whatever that the way is you know for your community Okay, for even again for your family, even you, you know even the subcultures in for, in the larger cultures. Okay, our family, our specific family. Okay, is a subculture. We have a culture to our family, a subculture to you know the the greater culture at large. Okay, um, so we train them a specific kind of way. We teach them how to behave. We teach them how to uh, treat others and how to get along where we should. You know teach them how to get along with others as well as themselves okay and when you know how to do it with yourself when you know how to treat yourself and be loving to yourself and kind to yourself humane to yourself so on and so forth when you are trained in that regard and you are cared for confucianism cared for in that regard okay then you are able to do it to others okay so here we have some people don't know how to be kind okay it's not an insult some people don't know how to be kind Okay, some people who you know they can admit, I don't know, I don't know how, you know, my mouth too fucking slick. <laughs> okay, I say whatever fuck I, you know, come to my, come to my head. <laughs> and whether it's nice or not, you know what I'm saying. And, so, and most of the times it's not. I'm not talking about me specifically, I am talking about this. this is just some people tell you this shit, okay? They don't know how to be kind, okay? Uh, especially people that are honest with themselves, <laughs> you know. It's wonderful, you know, when a person is like that and they can be honest with themselves. <laughs> you know, sometimes a person might say, I ain't shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They know they ain't. Okay? They know they're not. Okay? Uh, you know, so some people just truly, they don't know how to be kind. Okay? Or they have difficulty in certain situations being kind spontaneously. So, in other words, it just doesn't come natural to them. Okay? Okay? You got the, you know, some people just don't know how to be kind. Some people don't want to be fucking kind. You understand what I'm saying? Or some people just in the moment, spontaneous, they don't know how to do it. Okay? So here you have these five great relationships. Remember, if you don't know your role in Confucian, in Confucian society, there's reference for you to go back. Okay? Are you the elder brother? Are you the younger brother? Are you the wife? Are you the husband? Are you the child? Are you the boss? Are you the, you understand what I'm saying? Employee. Are you the ruler? Are you the, you know, the subject? So on and so forth. And what is your role? Okay? And simply just, you know, do your role. Okay? Even if, if it may not come from the heart, it's still your role. You still have to act in your role because what's more important in Confucianism is that the society has order. Okay? And order comes from um, um, a social interaction, okay, and how we treat one another, and that uh, we are everyone is cared for. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, let's keep on going. All right. Um, and Confucian thinking to follow social conventions is an important way for such people to show rent, okay, to think of the other. Just follow social conventions. What does the so you don't know how to do it spontaneously here? Okay. When you see your elder person, boss or whatever, you give you give them a, a slight bow. Okay, you don't have to think. You don't have to think. You don't have to try to figure it out. If it just don't come to you, bam. Here, here's a rule. Okay. And now this maybe people say, well, that control. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, you know the laws for the lawless. Okay, we need and you know Confucian Confucius saw we need some social order here. Okay. Things that's just got chaotic, chaotic, you know, things are falling apart. We need some order. Okay. Um, after all, underlying uh, all worthy social conventions is considerateness. Okay. A model that reflects the essence of Ren. If you want to be kind, be polite. Period. Just be polite. Okay. Be polite. 
Okay. The next one is Li, L-I. This word is often translated as propriety, which means doing what is appropriate, okay? Or doing what is proper to the situation. What's the situation? Okay? All right? You just can't go something, whatever you may do at home, you, you may not be at, you can't, you know, you, you, you at home, you kick back, you know, take your shoes off, your socks off, maybe your clothes off, so on and so forth, and, you know, put on your house clothes, your pajamas, whatever. It's not appropriate to the situation to go do that on your job. Okay? It's not appropriate to the situation, you know, to, to uh, do that at school. Although I see folk nowadays. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I wear my pajamas outside because they're comfortable. As if they're no other, com as if the only comfortable clothes are pajamas. Okay, you know, I just came up in a time where how you presented yourself to the world meant everything. Okay, it had everything to do with how people were going to to view you and talk to you. Okay, and I know we live in a time where I don't care what what people think. <laughs> okay, don't. <laughs> And you will reap whatever the consequence and or benefit of that might be. You know what I'm saying? It depends on, you know, your lifestyle, what you want, what you're looking for, what you want to happen, you know, in your life, who you want to take you seriously, where you want to go, so on and so forth. All right. <laughs> All right. So, you know, certain things are just not appropriate to the situation. Okay. You know, you, how you run and play, you know, how they would say, used to say uh, to the kids um, in school, well, when I sup, that was one thing that I learned. Okay. They have uh, a checklist of, of, of um how do you say sound okay you got your inside voice you know you get this voice you that and all the way up to your outside voice okay so if i if i say you know we got to go down to one now for the inside voice <laughs> that's the inside voice y'all coming in from recess and yet you you at number five which it, what does this say number five that's the outside voice miss Lou. that's right where you're supposed to be number one all right let's get down to number one okay what's appropriate okay you running and jumping and uh, twirling all over the desk you, you understand what I'm saying? as if it's a slide and so on and so forth that's not a, no that's not appropriate to the situation it was appropriate when we was outside for reasons it's not appropriate you know in here okay so propriety doing what is appropriate or doing what is proper to the situation now originally Lee referred to carrying out rights correctly. More generally, it means knowing and using the proper words and actions for social life. Okay, you know. Um, let, well, let me just keep one. For each situation, there are appropriate words to say. Okay, proper ways to dress and correct things to do. Okay, what you might wear to the club. Uh, you may not, Saturday night, you know, you don't want to wear that to church Sunday morning. But, you know, now it's okay. <laughs> yeah, and I'm laughing at it. I am, okay. Um, but there was a time, you know, even in Western society, you know, you know, what certain things that you wear, certain places you don't wear other places. Okay, certain things that you say in some places, you know, that's not appropriate to say in another uh, atmosphere, another, you know, Okay, um, certain things that you would do in one place, you don't want to do that in another place. Okay, now the analects, analects, A N A L E C T S, are thought to record the sayings of Confucius and his followers. What do they assert? To subdue oneself and return to propriety is perfect virtue. In other words, to control yourself. Okay, control yourself, subdue yourself. Okay, like now in in Taoism, okay, do what's natural to you, okay? In Confucianism, I don't think so. You understand what I'm saying? Some things that are natural to the human being, you know, are not appropriate, okay? Depending on the society, what the society, again, has put in uh, place, you know, to say that, that this is appropriate here, you know, this is this is what we want our society to be. Okay, so subdue yourself, control yourself, okay, return to, you know, knowledge of self, okay, what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing, when, where, and how, okay. Now, in Western culture, which values what is different and individualistic, the notion of lead may seem oppressive, okay, and even suggest personal weakness.
All right. Again, so that's the whole idea of, like I was saying under Ren, this is where people look and say, okay, that's, con you know, control. This, you know, they're controlling people. But yeah, okay. Because once again, the law is for the lawless. <laughs> Definitely, you know, from a Confucius standpoint, okay? Confucianism, on the contrary, sees self-control as a sign of strength and practicality. Not just, I just do whatever the hell I want to, where I want to, when I want to, how I want to, okay? It's kind of like you lose yourself, okay? You're no longer subdued. You just kind of lose your way. You lose your being, okay? Um, you know, I don't know. You know, science, you know... When we were growing up in science, we were taught that, you know, basically, in a sense, you know, well, not in a sense, you know, human beings are animals as well. We, You know, we're just animals. <laughs> okay. And it wasn't said in a negative sense. Like, in a sense, you know, you're just wild beasts. Okay. But in a way, okay, one could think that that's what's being said here, you know, here in, with Confucianism. Okay, you're just wild beasts who need to be, human beings are just wild beasts who need to be tamed. Okay, they need some control. They need some law and order. Okay. And I think we can see that, you know, because when they don't have it, now this is from the Confucian standpoint, not the Taoist standpoint. When they don't have it, they just lose control. Okay. And then the society falls apart. Okay. We all recognize that every social way, uh, excuse me, every social situation has its hidden structure. There again, okay, structure, okay. Chew gum at a job interview, and psh, you ain't gonna get the job. Go in there with your pajamas on. You can do that. You can do that, okay. But don't get mad when you don't get the job, okay. Don't question it. You understand what I'm saying? You can go in there and cuss and I'm just going to be me. I'm just going to keep it real or whatever the hell. Okay, sure. You're more than welcome <laughs> to, to, to do that. Don't be surprised when, you know, whatever you're looking for to happen good for you, you know, in terms of getting a job or whatever, you know, which will help better your situation financially and so on and so forth. And since we know money answers all things, okay, you, 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 you know why you didn't get it. All right. Um, wear shorts to a funeral and you'll probably cause hurt to the mourners. OK, yeah, even there's a certain way to dress, you know, um, you know, you go to a funeral. OK, it's just a sign of respect. OK, for the mourners. OK, and the person who has passed on. Lee means in simple words, good manner, good manners. It's putting Ren into practice. Ren to think of the other Lee is to put that into practice. How do you put that into practice? Good manners, okay? And people used to teach their children manners. <laughs> I know I said used to, right? Okay. I mean, I know there's people who still do. All right. Okay. Shoe. S-H-U. This is a third one. The usual translation of shoe is what? Here. Reciprocity. Reciprocity. But it addresses the question, how will my action affect the other person? Okay. How is what I'm going to do and say and so on and so forth? How is it going to affect them? Okay. Here. Okay. Hold. Let me get to it. It is also another version of the golden rule. What do we know the golden rule to be? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The Confucian version version is, you know, stated differently. Do do not do unto others what you would not wish done to yourself. Okay. You know, you know, in a, in a sense, we, we are all one, okay? Uh, we're individuals, but we are one, okay? And remember, the Tao, because still in Confucianism, Confucianism is still, you know, adheres to uh, the, um, the teachings of Taoism, okay? It's just this one part about humans. Don't, don't do what's natural to you. Don't not go get knowledge. You need to, okay? You need to be trained. You need to have understanding, okay? Um, you you need some intellect, okay? Uh, be, that that will help you become a person of excellence and a well-rounded human being, okay? So that we can have a better society and a society with social order, okay? So think, okay? This rule is called the silver rule, okay? Um, it helps me to consider my actions from other person's viewpoint, 
okay and we know we kind of know that you know we, we will say that you know how would that make you feel you know if what you did to me or what you think about doing to me or whatever the hell you know how would you how would it make you feel if someone did that to you okay i mean i don't think that it just that's often the first thing that comes to our mind when we set out to do something to another person okay or not do something to another person and what do I mean by that okay where well, this person may someone may have showed shown you kindness and compassion uh, humaneness so on and so forth everything that we just went over with Ren okay you may not think okay to do that with someone else although it has been shown to you we're here Confucianism handles all that if it was if if, if someone shown has shown you kindness uh, humaneness compassion etc etc then it is your duty to show that to another person okay in other words all right or uh, yeah you know so think about let me think first you know how would that make that person feel okay if I did that okay the virtue also implies the obligations <clears throat> excuse me entails uh, here until by relationships are mutually binding there you, you have a duty Okay, you have a duty. Okay, the fourth one, Zhao, X-I-A-O. Okay, this is translated as filial piety. Okay, devotion of a son or daughter to a parent. Okay, so a child being devoted to their parent. It also means the devotion that all members have to their entire family's welfare. It encompasses several notions, remembrance of ancestors, okay, ancestor veneration, respect for parents, respect for elders, and care for children and the family. Everyone is respected. You know, when I say respected, you know, uh, everyone is respected, and I'm talking about the children as well. How do you respect the child? You know, by showing them care, making them feel safe, make, making them feel secure, okay, uh, that they know they ain't out roaming in this big, wild-ass world on their own without any kind of safety net okay they know that their needs are going to be met because they're too small to meet their needs on their own okay um <clears throat> ideally it means valuing the entire extended family not just present of past present and future okay again remembering your ancestors honoring your ancestors who you are where you came from present those that are pre pre around you and do a future doing what is appropriate okay so that you know those that come behind you your descendants okay are respected as well okay it is possible that later generations of confucians emphasize this virtue more than uh, confucius himself the virtue was especially spread by a uh, classic of uh, filial pi piety which is a book which was written a century or two after the time of confucius the last one when w-e-n this simply means culture and includes all the arts that are, are associated with civilization all right confucianism has a special love for poetry and literature a fondness for calligraphy painting and music the arts all right the educated person is expected not only to have a knowledge of these arts but to have an amateur skill in them as well so you you know you ain't got to be you know a great classical pianist <laughs> Oh, you understand what I'm saying? You know, or the next Picasso, okay? But just have, you know, even an amateur skill in those things, all right? <clears throat> it can also entail the general notion of, of appreciation of art, okay? Connoisseurship. A connoisseur has a highly developed aesthetic sense and is able to know and appreciate beauty in its many forms, all right? Confucianism stresses other virtues. Those virtues are loyalty, consensus, hard work, thrift, honesty, uprightness, and emotional control. So do yourself. Get your emotions in check. You understand what I'm saying? There is nothing wrong with emotions. We as human beings, we that is a part of our makeup to, you know, to be emotional, to have emotions, okay? However, okay, you don't, it's hot, you're getting hot. You don't want to, you know, your emotions to get out of control. Control your emotions, okay? <clears throat> one virtue frequently mentioned is sincerity the confucian notion of sincerity is not the same as the western notion it's the opposite western the western notion of sincerity concerns something that an individual says or does okay that is personal and from the heart free of social control that's our western notion of sincerity 
The Confucian notion of sincerity means to choose naturally and automatically to do what is correct for society. Okay, what is best for your society? All right. It teaches that the individual should restrain selfish desires. Okay, there you go. We there we go with that desire thing again here in Eastern these Eastern uh, religions and these Eastern modes of thought. Okay, we saw it in Hinduism, we saw it in Buddhism. Okay, um, we saw it in Taoism. I did not go over Sikhism, but I'm even hearing Sikhism, but I don't know. I don't know Sikhism. I have to read up on it. Okay. Um, I taught it a little bit, but not often. Okay. So I don't really know it as well. But anyway. Okay. So again, restrain your selfish desires. Okay. In order to fulfill job duties and social obligations properly. All right. In, a, in other words, everyone and everything, the whole of society is affected by you and what you do or what you choose not to do, okay? That is appropriate or not, okay? Through this kind of unselfish sincerity, the noble person becomes united with the force of the universe. What is the force of the universe? The Tao, okay? This is how you become united with the Tao, okay? From which you come. Okay, you are a manifestation of the Tao. Okay, according to Confucian thought, wait a minute, the force of the universe. Okay, I'm sorry. Sincerity is the way of, this is in quotes, sincerity is the way of heaven. He who possesses sincerity is he who, without an effort, hits what is right. You're, going, you, you're concerned about the society, okay? Then you, you automatically, you're going to do what's right, okay? Um, he who attains to sincerity is he who chooses what is good and firmly holds fast to it. It's a choice, okay? How you behave, in other words, towards others, therefore yourself, okay? It's a choice. We all have a choice, all right? I'm hungry. I'm going to try to go over this last part. There's a lot more to it, but okay. I just want to, again, show the basics. So let me see. Hopefully, my hunger don't get the best of me. Confucianism and the modern world. The modern world has been hard on government-sponsored Confucianism. In 1911, the Qing Dynasty collapsed and with it also collapsed the public system of Confucian ceremony and education. Okay. When faced with the new scientific knowledge introduced to China from Europe, Confucianism as a total educational curr curriculum seemed inadequate. Young Chinese sought out a whole new form of education. Confuci traditional Confucianism couldn't compete. All right. Uh, Confucian temple ritual also came to an end in China, having always relied on support from the state. Early attacks on Confucianism was made by this new cultural movement, which began in 1916. Some members wanted to hold to the Confucian ethics. Others thought that all vestiges of Confucianism should be destroyed. Just get, just get rid of it altogether, okay? Um, there was one person who, his name was Hu Shi, who he studied at Columbia University under the philosopher John Dewey and returned to China to teach and write. All right, he wanted to get rid of it, all vestiges of Confucianism, but here we see he was educated in the West. Okay, he was a leader, okay? Um, educated, it just got his education in the West. Whole different culture, whole different outlook, whole different way of being, all right? Uh, the new cultural movement embraced the views of pragmatic thinkers such as William James, John Dewey, Bertrand Russell, and criticized Confucianism. It was accused of enslaving women to their fathers and husbands, of subjugating sons to tyrannical fathers, and keeping alive a culture and literature that only looked to the past. So we do see, okay, even though, okay, this may sound good. Okay, very idealistic that they put into play, okay? But here you had some issues that came about as a result of that, okay? You got to do what I say, no matter how crazy I might be. <laughs> Tyrannical fathers, okay? 
uh, women subject to uh, their husbands and sons. Okay, regardless of just because these virtues were put in place, don't mean people always followed them and did them. Here we here humans, we we're human beings. Okay. <clears throat> The communist uh, t takeover of mainland China, 1945. Of course, that further weak that further weakened Confucianism. Okay, uh, communism was highly critical of Confucianism for a few reasons. One reason, Confucianism pre preached elitism. Okay, rather rather than egalitarianism. Okay, although Confucianism maintains that anyone can become a, jun a junzi or a noble person. Through training, in fact, Confucian education has been limited to only parents who could afford it. Okay, so it really wasn't available to the whole of society. Okay, how many people could actually afford Confucian education? All right, communism proposed to educate all equally. Second, communists accused Confucianism of valuing males over females. Well, we can kind of see that. <laughs> okay. Uh, reserving education and power for males and no power to none, no official power to wives or daughters. Only one exception in all of Chinese history, uh, the Empress Wu. She ruled from 683 to 705 CE. Okay, The official role of the emperor has been confined to males only. Women roles were traditional, having children, Okay, and women got their identity from men. Okay, communism has preached that Confucianism, Confucianism, sexist tendencies created oppression and a loss of talent for society. Okay, how? Well, what, what, what talent did these women have? Okay, that they were not able to implement, you know, really for the society. No, all you can do is have babies and, you know, take care of the home. That's it. Okay. Um, third, communist critics communist criticized Confucianism for focusing on the old, okay, rather than the new and humanities rather than sciences. Okay, we, we did hear a lot about art, the focus on art. Okay. Um, it was just like a backwards vision. Okay. Just things from the past, things of old. Communists thought that when com um communists thought that only when Confucianism was de destroyed completely could China moved forward. On the mainland, these views led to earlier destruction of the Confucian temples, okay, and whatever their use was for other purposes. And, oh, excuse me. Excuse me. And to the development of Western-based curriculum for education and government jobs. So completely do away, you know, with our tradition, our culture, our way of life and our being, and implement in totality the way of Western values. The system, uh, you know, and curriculum for education and government. The system of Confucianism has fared better in neighboring uh, Asian countries and regions such as South, South Korea and Taiwan. Uh, their Confucian temples and rituals remained diminished in form Okay, but remain nevertheless by the government of, uh, or the, or private families. All right, but in every country influenced by China, such as Japan and Singapore, Singapore, we find the Confucian system of virtues and behavior still very much alive. All right, you know you can get rid of something only to a certain extent, especially depending on how long it's been imp implemented in the society, how long they've been doing it. All right, uh, Confucian virtues uh, may have helped lead. Confucian countries to modern economic development, though. All right, a growing public respect for Confucius and his thought has brought about a restoration of some Confucian materials to the curriculum and teaching of Confucian virtues, blended with science, math, and computer technology. So, in other words, they just blended it. Okay, as time went on and in its progression. Okay, yeah, we're gonna take some of this Western stuff, but we're gonna implement. Um, you know, what is traditional to us, okay? <clears throat> Let me see. Hmm. Right? Okay. The leaders of Confucian countries are horrified by what they by what they have seen of chaos the chaotic individual individualism excuse me and violence in some western cult cultures 
Okay, so they implemented this, but then they looked and said, well, now, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> we don't want our society to turn into that. Okay, the chaotic individualism, okay, and the violence, the extreme violence in Western uh, societies. They seek the Confucian ethic as an antidote to social ills and therefore to continue to view education as character building, not just intellectual formation. Okay, Singapore developed a national educational curriculum that teaches Confucian virtues. Confucian virtues continue to be taught in schools, companies, government, and government work, okay, in East Asian countries. Okay, you will see Conf Confucian instruction on television in these countries. Okay, the behavior expressing the values of harmony, loyalty, filial piety is visible in historical dramas and stories of modern life. This is what you know in in the entertainment. Confucian teaching is in practice being modified for modern life. Okay, the lesser status of the female, they're getting rid of that. Okay. Um, widely and women are demanding equal opportunity and having equal opportunity um, well they're beginning to demand equal opportunity okay this book say beginning this is an old uh, edition not old is this edition it ain't that old okay first copyright was 1999 okay and then 2010 the last one all right um, Confucian societies are now offering curriculums blending science, okay, focusing on the future as well as studies of the past. So basically, they just, okay, we see the benefits of both, okay? It was like one extreme or the other. Now we see the benefits of both. Let's blend this both, both of these for our society. Okay, they're, they're letting loose on this you know, idea of not focusing on the individual. Okay, there's, there's latitude here being given to individual needs and individual personalities. Confucianism is gaining a new attractiveness, a renewed attractiveness. Instead of dying, it's beginning a new stage, all right? The core of Confucianism is what it is, okay? It's primarily ethical because it focuses on correct behavior, but it's more because it rests on a vision of human unity and a connection with the, with the harmony of the universe. Boom. That's it uh, with uh, Confucianism, okay? I don't think I'm going to do Shinto, okay? That's the last Eastern, well, no, not really. Okay, but uh, I think now I'm going to just move my next video is going to go into Judaism. I really suggest that those that are interested in having greater knowledge of Christianity, okay, look at that. That's kind of long, okay. That one is real long, okay. Um, but if you want to truly understand what Christianity is, it's not just I go to church and I... I love the Lord, <laughs> or I believe in Jesus, okay? And because I go to church and I love the Lord and I, I believe in Jesus, therefore I'm a Christian. That is not, no, that is not what makes a person a Christian, okay? Uh, a lot of people, uh, even of other religion, religions, who follow other religions, they have the same thing. That, that does not make you a Christian, all right? There are actual... Um, you know, it's a, it has an actual specific belief system, okay? So, but if you want to understand Christianity, you can't really understand Christianity without understanding Judaism, okay? It's just not possible, <laughs> okay? They're tied, all right? All right, so my next video, I think I'm just going to go straight. I am going to go I'm not. I don't think I know I am. I'm going straight in. Hey, <laughs> I'm going to go straight into uh, Judaism. That's going to be a few videos, and then we'll go into uh, Christianity, and the last one will be Islam, okay? If anyone, and that'll be it on my religious studies series. However, if anyone, you know, wants me to kind of look into another religion that I have not done, you know, and with this religious studies series, or ones that uh, I have here in the book, but I purposely didn't go over, Jainism, Sikhism, uh, Shinto, okay? And then it... The, it, it, the book, even after Islam, there's a lot more in there, okay, um, that you'd like me to go over. Let me know, you know, that you'd like me to look into.
I'd be more than happy to, okay? And uh, take some time, do a little study, and do some videos on it, all right? Um, what else? I think that's it, all right? So once again, thank you all for those who uh, uh, have subscribed to the channel. If you watch the videos, I ask that you like the videos, okay? If you know of any other, uh, I do see some other channels that talk about some of these religions. I do because it comes up in my feed automatically, okay? Because that's a lot of the content on my channel. Um, but if you know of any others uh, that I might be interested in and checking out, please let me know. All right? Um, and that's it. I'm hungry. Y'all be blessed. Peace.